It's the NFL on EA Sports. And we'll see the versatile Debo Samuel. Always staying busy, he's your league leader in receiving yards. It's the 49ers and the Eagles. All that and more coming up next. Just north of the Delaware Expressway and east of Broad Street, we find ourselves at Lincoln Financial Field in South Philly. Straight ahead is a rematch of last year's NFC Championship game as it'll be the San Francisco 49ers taking on the defending NFC champs, the Philadelphia Eagles. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Eagles team as they interplay here. And they've lost three straight here, and it goes without saying, I guess, they could certainly use a win. And how do they get a win? Because they've lost three straight, I think it's paramount that they get a fast, clean start to this game. On the other side of the field for the visiting 49ers, the streak continues, doesn't it? They come in here a perfect 11-0. The calendar has turned to December, and we're in the home stretch now as we're underway in Week 13. Ray Ray McLeod to return. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. And they will be led out by their signal caller in his second year of the NFL now. And I thought it was a really nice performance last week by him. Three touchdown passes. I think that signifies exactly what he was getting done. He did have the one interception. But that's the ratio you say you're okay with, right? If you go three to one, you're going to be pretty happy over the course of the season. And let's face it, he'll never blame the receiver publicly. But behind closed doors, <laughs> he probably told his agent, hey, what's the deal? I should have had a perfect game. Purdy going to the air right away. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle it, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Samuel in motion. He's going to handle it on the touch pass. And Debo going to have a Niners first down as the tackle going to be made up at the 37. There are the numbers for Samuel from that game last week. Three catches, 96 yards, and a touchdown. And he has 10 touchdowns on the season. When anyone scored that many times, as a former defender, I know exactly what you're talking about before the game. Key on him. Don't let him get in the end zone today, guys. Let's keep him out of there. First carry for Christian McCaffrey. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Jordan Davis, just a monster on that play, stopping it from going anywhere. No daylight for him to run through there, and he ran into the defensive tackle, and that guy blocks a whole lot of daylight as it is. He is truly a big man who just made a big play. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Now former six-round pick, it's Elijah Mitchell. So they cite the right guard this time with a holding penalty. And so many different assignments you could have at that position, and sometimes you might just be a step too late and have to grab and hold on. Samuel going to go in motion right. And he'll get it here on the touch pass. Oh, and that is well read defensively. A great job of setting the edge, and that little touch pass is going to turn into a loss. This defense not fooled one bit on that touch pass. And this has become one of those kind of in vogue plays, you know, kind of like the shuffle pass was a few years ago. This one never got off the ground, but you understand why a lot of teams are running it. These wide receivers, a lot of them, they've run like running backs with the ball in their hands. Defense to hold things 
in check and force a punting situation. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. Taken in at the 22. 51 yards on the punt there. And it will be Eagles football first and 10. So here come the Eagles, the defending NFC champs, led out by a man who was the runner-up to Patrick Mahomes at MVP balloting a season ago. Of course, that's Jalen Hurts. And no excitement, unless, he, unless you're on the defensive team of last week, in his numbers, because the only excitement he really generated was the one interception he threw. Yeah, no touchdown passes. Yeah, and his team wasn't real thrilled about that. And they lost the game. So, I know this week has been tough on him because he's been working hard. Fundamentals, footwork, finding the right targets. And bottom line, how do they get a win? Here's a run on first down that doesn't accomplish anything. In fact, he's going to be tackled behind the line for a loss of one. You look at this Niner defense. They were terrific a week ago in the win over Seattle. In today's football, there aren't a lot of goals for defenses. But when you hold a team under 100 total yards of offense, yeah, that has to be a goal that was met. Big check mark for them in last week's game. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Once again, it's Swift. He works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. Well, this defense for the Niners, they were terrific a week ago in the win over Seattle. In today's NFL, when you talk about goals for defenses, and you think that maybe you'd like to hold them under 14 points or so, we think our offense can usually get 17 to 20, so that's a reasonable goal. But when you hold a team under 100 yards of total offense, you're going to win 99 times out of 100. And the one game you lose, you'll know who to blame. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. The third down conversion is successful. Give him 12 yards that time. Certainly not a positive sign if you're the D coordinator and you see your guys give up that space so early in the game. Third down, that's when the clamps are supposed to come out, but his ability to create things with his legs makes things difficult. On first and 10, it's Hurts. Finds his target, it's Swift along the sideline. So the completion there, but Charles, looking at this defense, certainly in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allow the completion there. They don't want to get a string of those going. Let him get his confidence. Let him get into the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game, and all of a sudden, he's feeling like he can do no wrong. You want to really get after his timing a little bit, knock a few balls away, and make things uncomfortable for him. Because if he feels relaxed, you are in for a tough afternoon. That time, the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what, though, you can't hold them. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Hurts sets up to throw it. This is complete to Watkins on the slam. Call it a gain of three on the play. And that's going to set up a tough third and nine. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. Here's third and nine. Throwing his hurts. And that is incomplete. Yeah, it's still early in the game. No sense taking a chance on third down and forcing one into traffic. So I like the wise play he made there. Get it to the sideline out of bounds where no one's going to have a chance at it. Andy on fourth Lee down, here's Andy Lee, Lee on to kick it away. Ray Ray McLeod deep here for the Niners. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. 
Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? You look at this Eagle defense. This unit, third best in the NFL in stopping the run. I still crack up a little bit after we left our meeting with the defensive coordinator. Because I said to you, stop me if you've heard this before. <laughs> How about him saying, well, first order of business, we got to stop the run. Of course you do. He's got a good unit. But facing the number one rushing team, they have to stop that in order to have a good performance. It'll go as a gain of four. And now we've got a third down and three. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, short tackle. And he is going to lose yardage here. They lost two, and it brings up four. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Here's Mitch Wisnowski now. This is brought in at the 21. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. So back onto the field. Here come the Eagles for their second drive. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. the ground it's swift to start the drive and to the 36 yard line taken down there after getting eight yards but you often say that sort of opens the playbook now second and short what do you think early shot here i like where you're going obviously we've been together for a while because you know me i want to take that shot early and loosen things up now a second and two They'll stay on the ground with Swift. And space tough to come by there as they get maybe a yard to the 37. After watching that play result, it took me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and we asked him, so how are you planning to move the ball against his defense? He didn't really tip his hand, did he? No, he didn't. I think it's because he really didn't have an answer. He wasn't quite <laughs> sure how he was going to get it done. And that play showed us exactly why he was worried. Yeah, this number one defense, they can put that on their highlight reel. They have been able to stop the run all season long. And this is going to be an Eagles first down as good running gets him to about the 44. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy set the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back. First and ten, it's Swift. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Hurts. Open man, that's Devontae Smith. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers, 42. Hurts fighting Smith for the Philly first. Well, certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. But first down, Hurts. He'll get this one complete. That's A.J. Brown. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Eagles will jump on top of the game's first score here this afternoon. And on this play, he just made a great route. The quarterback had to deliver it, sure, but a great route run there. And, Brandon, this is what the best receivers do. They work on their route running because it's one thing to have athletic ability, but to really get open, 
You have to set up defensive backs with different routes and be precise in your cuts. Elliott good on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. So the drive there took six plays, and it's capped off by an A.J. Brown touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's see if they can do better here on this drive. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. After one, 7 nothing on EA Sports. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter as they are looking at a second down and six coming up. Throwing here, Purdy. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. The CD here, you know, this offense at 11 0 now on the year. A few weeks ago, I remember asking you what kind of percentage chance that you thought they had at staying unbeaten the entire season. I think you said 25%. I'd imagine that number probably grown since then. I would agree with you, and I'm going to actually bump it up to closer to 50% only because they still have some tough games to come. And keeping that focus throughout the entire season, that's been a really difficult thing to play. But so far, they've done it, and they've done it well. I know this offense was expecting to do big things, but it certainly hasn't turned out that way, at least not through the first three drives. They definitely have to put their heads together and start concocting some offense that will move the ball downfield. Wisnowski on to punt as he sends this one away. Fielded just inside the 20. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And they will take over first and 10. The Eagles just about set to go to work on offense. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right in the yard. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counting on to be that in-line point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run a wide receiver. the defense. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Hurts. That's complete to DeAndre Swift out of the backfield. Now this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. And a good run here as he'll run it all the way down to the 40 yard line. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for an eagle first down. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. And that led to a really nice game. And they wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 23 yards, the final tally. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? 
Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring. Them. And they're going to get him. He's sacked back around the 28. Drake Jackson, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Now they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. They run out of the gun with Swift. And he'll be taken down just shy of the red zone at the 21. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. Dre Greenlaw getting home on that one. So not only do you not get the first down, but you've also made things a lot more difficult on your field goal kicker. Yeah, they're still in range, but you're exactly right because you know the kicker's over there saying, thanks a lot, you just made my job a little tougher because when he kicks it now, he'll kick it lower because he's got to get more distance. That means there's more jeopardy for the ball to get tipped or blocked. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points in three of them. Yeah, that's when your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. The 49ers ready to set up shop again offensively. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Purdy looking to throw. Pressure comes and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. That's sack courtesy of the effort of Hassan Reddick. And every game we talk about winning. As we go into it, maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them and they get their first sack of the contest. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Open man is Juwan Jennings. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. A gain there of 21 yards. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Oh, they're going to run a little pop pass here. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and a yard. Now Purdy. That's caught inside the 20. And he's brought down after a very nice game. 36 yards on the play. Uh, so after we're watching a football game, we see one with a lot of ebbs and flows, and this one is no different. And sometimes you just need a big play to wake you up a bit. And they get one right there. That shot of caffeine this offense was looking for. Tackle there by big Jordan Davis. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has a real priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Second and nine. Play action. Now Purdy. Blitz coming and down he goes. The safety blitz turns out to be a great call defensively as they sack him for a loss of nine. The offense on third down, 0 
for three to this point. They can use a conversion. This will be a tough third and 18. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. And a bit of a lead on the sack, and it's going to lead him to fourth down. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? That's three sacks now, and this team came into the game in the bottom five in the league in sacks. Yeah, this is not, it's not been their bread and butter. I don't know, is a blind squirrel finding a nut, or is this something they can build on? Well, they found some momentum. They found a crack in that offensive line, and they're putting it to good use. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe, and they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. Well, that's something of a pick-me-up, but the offense certainly has struggled, but they do get the field goal before half to put three on the board. Yeah, you don't want to be shut out, but let's face it, those three points, that's not going to solve all their problems either. The 49ers ready to kick it away, and here we go. From a yard or two deep, here comes the return. And a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. The Eagles offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. On second down, Swift. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback on the expected passing situation. Here's Hurts to throw. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. Here's the veteran punter Lee as he sends this one away. McLeod to return it. They'll get nine yards on the return there following a punt of 42. And the Niners will go on offense first and ten. Well, the Niners going back on offense now late in this first half. And with good starting field position and three timeouts as well in their pocket, no reason not to try and put a late scoring drive together. Good starting field position for the 49ers as they have it first and ten on their side of midfield at the 47. Taking a shot for Samuel. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Well, the first two drives only yielded three points. They might be thinking it's time to make something happen, push the ball downfield, and try and gain some points that way. Unfortunately, incomplete. Throwing on second down, it's Purdy. Winds up and lets it go for Samuel. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. And they're not going to go quietly into this halftime break. They know they're in for a fight, so they're trying to make every possession count. They took the big shot there, but it winds up incomplete. Purdy with it on third and long. Taking a shot for Samuel. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. He's on coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, it was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. The three straight incompletions, they don't care. That hasn't dissuaded them. They're going to go for it on fourth. Purdy on fourth down. He's got his target. That's complete. Touchdown! Jerron Jennings, 53 yards. And the 49ers are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. Boy, Charles, this offense is just so explosive. They lead the league in scoring, 
and another example of just how good they are right there on that play. Yeah, we often overstate about how explosive teams are, but this team is truly a threat to score on every snap, especially on the first few plays of any series. And a big strike like that, that only adds to their reputation as the league's best offense. Moody good with the extra point, and that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Eagles offense is going to take over late in this first half as they will take over here with a little more than 30 seconds remaining. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. That's complete to Swift out of the backfield. And he is going to lose yardage here. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. And look at this for the second straight play. The 49er defense drops him for a loss. So we have reached halftime here at a good one. 10-10 is our score. Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. No run back here to begin the half, and we will start at the 25-yard line. The Eagles ready to go on offense to begin quarter number three. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. From the gun, it's Hurts. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. This defense has passed its first two tests by forcing back-to-back -back incompletions. They know that there's probably another throw coming out third down. Let's see if they decide to force the issue by sending people on a blitz. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now back to throw. He had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it, and that's a strong performance there defensively to force the incompletion and, more importantly, force a quick punting situation. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. Here's McLeod on the return. It's a return of four following a 42-yard punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. Here's a second down and seven from the 37. They'll send a receiver in motion to the right. They'll get it forward to him on the touch pass. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. They did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. And they stop him up short of the first down as they get him at about the 43. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And that'll bring up fourth down. Receivers love having the reputation of being go-to guys on third down. 
And he was fighting like he really wanted to have that reputation, didn't he? I mean, he came very close to making that a first down. Broke the one tackle, but couldn't spring himself free. And how about the call here? They need two yards in their own territory on fourth down, and they're going to go for it. the penalty of course and push the offense backwards a bit here comes the 49ers punter now he's been terrific so far and that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback here's the philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession and our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Swift going to try up the middle. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. And down he goes. The 49ers get there. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. Now that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football. It led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. On the option to give to Swift here. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. It's complete to Brown, right side. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 45-yard line. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good try. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 45-yard line. They will run straight ahead with Swift. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Now third down is looming, a pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. Early down stuffs to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. On third down, he'll drop to throw. This will be caught by Brown. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. Would have been right at about a 52-yard field goal try, but no, they are going to go for this thing on fourth down. They're going for it with the option right. And this is going to be nowhere close. Needed some inches and ended up losing yardage. The Eagles unable to convert there on fourth. And the 49ers are going to get the football back. And a design QB run in that spot. Maybe trying to catch the defense off guard a bit. It didn't work, though. Again, we're seeing that college influence come into the NFL. Quarterback run game on fourth down. 
We didn't see that very much in the previous years in the NFL. No, seeing it more, saw it there, did not work out. Turnover on downs. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right, he's pretty much been completely neutralized. Second and seven. They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. And a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. It'll go as a first down for San Francisco on a pickup of 16. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. And a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. And with the play clock about to expire, Kyle Shanahan's going to use a timeout. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. First down, here's Mitchell. And room there to work it inside the 25. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, Seven yards on first down. That fits the bill. Now second and three. Here's Purdy. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. As a defense, you're going to bounce when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Here now, third and a yard. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. I think it's pretty evident we can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. And his kick is indeed good. And that will finish off this third quarter of play. And they won't be able to run another play. Time has expired on this third quarter. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. For the fourth quarter, we'll begin with a kickoff following the score on the final play of the third quarter. The 49ers ready to kick it away, and here we go. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. They'll start on the ground with Swift. And he is going to lose yardage here. 
He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Yeah, another negative play in an early down situation. This one to start the drive. You're putting a lot of pressure on your quarterback to bail you out when you're in second and long yardage. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. He'll drop to throw. This is Smith with a ground. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45 yard line. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. And here we are in the fourth quarter, Bob, and we watch him drive for what would be a go ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. From the gun, here's Swift to about the 48-yard line. From the 48-yard line, here's second and six. Now Hurts going to keep it running left. And he's got this one across midfield into 49er territory. He'll wind up getting three on the keeper there, but it leads to a third down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. Hurts sets up to throw it. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Well, how about the coverage we just saw break out on third down? Dime defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10, right at the 30. And he'll start by handing this off to McCaffrey. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Seems pretty obvious. stopping the run game how they done it so successfully to me it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting and you know brandon when they do those they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run the best runs for the top running back those are the ones you focus on and want to take away and they've done that pretty successfully in this game now meanwhile a pass that should have been intercepted but it winds up falling incomplete the niners on third down as bad as you can be, 0 for 7 thus far. This is third down and 12. Purdy. That's Samuel, caught left side. And he's going to come up a few yards short of the first. They get him to the ground at the 37. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion and you count on your D to make it stand up. Now the offense is not leaving the field. They're going to stay out and go for it on fourth and three. On fourth down, here's Purdy. And it'll find the open man. That's complete. Now he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. Hey, nothing to see here. Just your standard fourth down gain of 28 yards. And the drive keeps going. Boy, that was a big gamble for them right there. They went for it on fourth down, showed a little chutzpah because they did it with the lead here in the fourth quarter. And this defense is once again unable to stop them. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Up 
the God McCaffrey. And some strong running there as he's down just shy of the 20 on the edge of the red zone. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. On first down, Purdy. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. So just three yards on the completion there. And that's going to bring up second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Here's second and seven. On second down, here's Mitchell. Now he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Now obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up the key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And he's going to be stopped way short of what he needed as the tackle is made at the 18-yard line. Only able to gain a couple there. And it'll be fourth down. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to swell the lead to six. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. And here's a big one now. Try to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Fourth down try. Here's Purdy. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Touchdown 49ers. George Kittle. An 18-yard touchdown grab. And the 49ers will add to their fourth quarter lead. So they get their tight end away from the line to the outside, and he works his way in for six. Tight ends are not just blockers anymore. I don't know how many more times we need examples, but here's a great one. Gets to the outside. They give him the ball pretty quickly, and they trust him to get those extra yards. And boy, did he come through bullying his way into the end zone after the nice catch. Moody good with the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it all ends with a George Kittle touchdown. Here is Wisnowski to boot it away following the touchdown. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And the script really has flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. On first and 10, it's Hurts. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. And now they're in the hurry-up. Second down, here's Hurts. Looking left side for Watkins, and he's got it. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Clock management definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. 
Here's a handoff to Swift. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. But first down, Hurts. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Back to the running game with Swift. And a strong run there as he'll maneuver his way down inside the 15. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. All three timeouts remain, but they've got to score quick. It's first and 10. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Hurts throw there, taken in by Smith. What can they come up with here? It's third and seven. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Got to avoid the flags defensively. Here's fourth and long. Escaping the pressure right. That is caught inside the five. And he'll be brought down with a penalty flag on the field. It was a late decision to throw, and it might have been too late. Well, we knew he was close to the line of scrimmage, and they say he stepped over. Uh, when you see him in that position, you think he's become a runner. As a DB, you start to react towards the line of scrimmage. They can often throw it over your head. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Third and four. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. Fights him off. And he will have a Niners first down. And that ought to be the one that seals the victory. Down to a knee for the 49ers. This one about to be on ice. Right, just us against the world and get it done. <laughs> How happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. <laughs> They'll go ahead and take the knee here, and the unbeaten season will continue. So the victory here for San Francisco, and it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second-half shutout. 